On this slide, we want to talk about check cohomology associated with an algebraic variety. Now to remind you what an algebraic variety is, it just locally looks like an affine variety. And uh, we would like to use the results from previous slides in this slide. So in particular, we will talk about separated algebraic variety. So we want to first note a result. So say x is separated, that means the diagonal is closed in x times x. Say u is an open affine subset of x and v is another open affine subset of x. And this x is separated means the diagonal. Diagonal is nothing but x comma x. This is subset of x times x is closed. So you take any set x, take another copy of it as x, and then you take the diagonal. For example, in r times r, you take in the plane, you take x equals to y as the diagonal. It should be closed. So proof. So u times v is a a fine if u and v are a fine. Now this is easy to see. You just take polynomials of u, polynomials of v, append them next to each other, and you get u times v as a fine. What we want to show is u intersection v is also a fine. So u intersection v you can define as u times v intersection with delta where is x comma x. Now if x is separated this delta is closed. So what you get is u intersection v is also a closed subset of u times v. Yeah, thus it is a fine. Now this is important because if this is a fine, then we will be able to use this corollary 2.6 on page 120. Yeah, we will make this into an a fine algebraic variety. So the theorem we are primarily concerned with is this. So say x is a separated algebraic variety and it has some cover. Now just to recall what a algebraic variety is, locally it looks like a fine variety. What does this mean? So you take any open set of algebraic variety you take any open set of algebraic variety, it looks like a affine algebraic variety. Yeah, so open set will look like a affine algebraic variety. So again, you should keep corollary 2.6 on page 120 of Perrin in mind, which we want to use. So you have an open cover, say ui of x, and there is a short exact sequence of quasi-coherent sheaves 0 to f to g to h to 0. So this is a short exact sequence of quasi-coherent sheaves. Then there is a long exact sequence of check cohomology. So this check cohomology looks like the way it should look like. You have h0 first, the cover and f, then h0 ug, h0 uh, then you go to h1, and then you go to h2. Now, 
for deriving this long exact sequence, we want a complex. If we have a complex, we will use this primary or fundamental theorem of homological algebra and we will get this long exact sequence. So we want a complex and uh, here we want a check complex in particular. So if we get this check complex, on the separated algebraic variety we are done yeah if we get this complex then we will use this fundamental theorem of homological ob algebra you have the complex you form the long exact sequence of cohomology groups so the question is how do we get this complex and the first thing is we see that how does this complex essentially look like so first let us recall how does the complex on x look like if you have sheaf f. So th this is how it looks like. And then there is some product here i0 less than i i1 all the way to i i p. Similarly, you have for G, and then you will also have the same for H. So now you write for H. So the idea is that we have this complex that is given to us. What we want is the arrows between these complexes. We want to form these red arrows. Somehow we want these arrows. If the, we have these arrows, we want to build these arrows. If we have these arrows, then we obviously have a complex. So we will have this if we have something like this, yeah, if you get something like this, f of u of i0 to ip, then g of u of i0 to ip, and then on h of u i0 to ip, you have this, then you can take its product, yeah, you can take a product, and then you can form a a part of the complex yeah for example this part you can form by just taking the product and then just keeping the maps as they should so you have you will have many of these small chains consisting of i0 to ip and you take the product and keep the maps as you should so if you get this then we will be done because then you can form these red arrows everywhere. You have this chain and then you will be done. So we have to show that this chain holds. So we will show that this chain holds. Why? So say this set is Y. Yeah. Then UI0 to IP is Y. You know that UI0, U subscript I0 all the way to IP is nothing but a set of intersections. And we are calling this set Y and this set of intersections is A fine. We started with this. I just ticked it, ticked it. So this Y is A fine by the lemma we had at the start. And now you can use corollary 2.6, which simply says that we have, uh, instead of X, we use Y as a A fine algebraic variety now and 0 to f to g to h is exact sequence of co quasi coherent sheaves and then there is an exact sequence of the global sections and uh, that is precisely what we are using here so on this slide we make an uh, important remark first so this is about check cohomology 
Jekko homology we have seen depends upon the cover we take. So this remark says that it actually does not depend upon the cover you take. So it depends basically on the space only, not the choice of cover. I think the proof of this is given in Hartshorn. So again, check cohomology does not depend upon the choice of open cover of the space. So for example, for circle, it does not matter what cover we take, you will have the same cohomology every time. Now proposition is, say X is a separated algebraic variety and Y is a closed subset of X. And we have defined some quasi coherent sheaf on Y. So F is a quasi coherent sheaf on Y. So then for all Y, so then for all I, we have this equality. Now, this is actually very simple. Once I draw the figure, it will be clear. So you have Y and you have these sets U in Y. And then you have this big space X in which Y is embedded. So you have Y here and again you have this open set U in, inside it. And you have the map J which takes Y into X. Now you already have a quasi coherent sheaf defined on Y. So Basically, we need to just define a sheaf on X now. And this will be the same sheaf which we would define on Y. So let us see. So Y is now also covered by these sets UI. X is covered by these sets UI. We have defined a sheaf on Y. Y is also covered by these sets UI. So you already have, you already have a definition of F, Y intersection, UI. So these are the open sets of y and this we have defined we are given this quasi coherent sheaf and basically this is precisely what it, it will also be on x so basically you will say f y intersection u i is also j star f of u i a new sheaf on x so j star f is a sheaf you could write g instead of j star f or some other letter. So obviously if UI does not meet Y, meet y then you have this 0.